So in Europe, they're saying, how can America ever repay these uh, dollar debts that they're running up? They can't repay, and that's why the euro is going up against America. And that's why they say, we want, we want to now talk to the BRIC countries, to China, uh, to the third world, and uh, move into a currency area with them and just isolate the dollar so they can't do the kind of financial warfare that uh, they've been engaging in. Well, uh, in terms of how countries can respond, one of the things that uh, obviously the, a lot of the Asian countries did uh, during the, the financial crisis in the late 1990s was currency controls, in essence, trying to prevent uh, f foreign ca capital from either leaving or entering the country. Is that, is that something that you envision some there, of these countries? Yes, there was only one country that did that, and that was Malaysia under Prime Minister Tun uh, Mohamed Mahathir. He uh, would not uh, sell uh, the domestic currency to the foreign uh, speculators, so George Soros and the others, who sold the currency short, hoping that the central bank would use all of its money just to defend its currency and then be emptied out, they couldn't cover their position. So they were squeezed. But uh, countries like Korea, where the meetings, uh, the G20 meetings are this week, uh, the IMF went and said, uh, you owe money, you can't pay, George Soros has raided you, you have to sell Americans, your electric companies, you have to sell Americans, your car companies. And this was a grab that in the past, in past centuries, there would have had to be a military invasion to take over, and now they're doing it financially, you, and uh, ang they're angry over there. You were uh, advising Kucinich when he was running for yes. president. Um, what is overall, what do you think President Obama should do, and what do you think he did wrong, since people say it's the economy that took him down? in the elections. He has always represented uh, Wall Street's interest. Uh, the deal he — his uh, protector in the Senate was uh, Joe Lieberman and part of the Democratic uh, Leadership Council. And during the last presidential campaign, uh, he won because he said he was for change. And Dennis Kucinich kept saying, here is the change in the law that I've, I've recommended. He said exactly what he would do. Uh, Mr. Obama never said what he would do. And it's obviously uh, the case that he saw that the public wanted change. If you want to get elected, you say there's for change. But what he's turned into is the third Bush-Cheney administration. He's reappointed the worst of the Bush people, like Tim Geithner at the uh, Treasury Secretary. He's kept on the most right wing of the Clinton people as his economic advisors. He is essentially in Wall Street's pocket. And that's not change at all. And that's why so many people were so disappointed. Uh, they believed that he was going to be for change, and he's a good speaker, but he had no intention of doing the change at all, as we now see. And he still has not come out and uh, said that America needs anything except more debt, more uh, bailouts for the banks. Uh, people were angry because the banks were bailed out. And now the Republicans were saying he didn't give them enough. They're angry because he didn't give Wall Street enough and cut taxes enough on the rich. That's not why people were angry. They're angry because he gave money to the rich, to the exact opposite. So uh, I guess you could say Mr. Obama and Mr. Kucinich are at opposite ends of the political political spectrum. What should he do right now? What he should do is uh, essentially bring the debts down to the ability to pay. Uh, he'd promised that he was going to uh, renegotiate mortgages to the current value of housing. That would mean writing down housing by about 30 percent, so it could be affordable again. But he hasn't done that. He, in the government, he has prevented the uh, state attorney generals from uh, prosecuting financial fraud and from forcing the banks to renegotiate the mortgage down to what American consumers can afford. And uh, Mr. Obama has uh, blocked this, and so all 50... And also what the real value of those, many of those real, properties market, are. Either the market <laughs> price or the rental price. So right. essentially, uh, people would pay uh, for the, uh, to own a house pretty much what you'd pay to rent. That's the definition of equilibrium uh, in uh, economics. But right now, they're paying much more uh, on their mortgage than they could go and uh, rent an apartment for, and they can't afford it. People are out of work. And uh, the result is that there's a debt squeeze. And so that's why I said this is deflationary, not inflationary. What should be inflated are American wages, American living standards, tangible investment. Instead, what's inflated is debt and the financial sector 
sector at the expense of the production and, and consumption. What do you expect to happen at the G20 meeting that's coming up now? Ab the same thing that happened two weeks ago. Absolutely nothing. They will all agree that the soup was very good, uh, that the food was nice, and uh, that they will have further discussions. But America uh, will not get any of it, uh, what it's asking for from them because they're going to say, look, we're not going to let you create electronic keyboard credit and buy out our real estate and our industry and empty out our bank reserves like you did in the 1997 Asia crisis. That's never going to happen again, and uh, the world is going to begin splitting into two uh, uh, currency blocks, the, the brick block and the uh, uh, dollar block. We're going to have to leave it there. Michael Hudson, president of the Institute for the Study of Long-Term Economic Trends, Distinguished Research Professor of Economics at University of Missouri, Kansas City, author of Super Imperialism, The Economic Strategy of American Empire. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute.